executive uh, at Macy's, went off and started his own company. Uh, Dash, what, what's the name of the official name of the company? Dash. So the company named Storebound, and we Dash is our biggest brand. Yeah. And so they make everything from Instapot cookers to the, the, the hot ones, the egg thing, and all these other things. So you'll get a chance to check them out uh, and see more of them uh, coming up at some meetings. So can't help myself. <laughs> appreciate it. And um, Troy Martin is here as well. And, and Jeff, you haven't even had a chance to meet with Troy yet. He's a brand new Hero Club member that's come on board with Lincoln Johnson, who was with us in South Dakota as well. Is Lincoln there too, Troy? No, he's locked up in something else right now. Yeah, Lincoln's, uh, Lincoln's, uh, Lincoln's off smoking something is what he's doing. That's what <laughs> we try to prevent him from doing that during the day. During the day. There during the day. They're in the cannabis They're business. That's cannabis why I say industry. that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, hi, uh, Catherine. Hi, Bill. Look at this. Hey, how are you, Jeff? I know. Wonderful. How's Hi. Dallas? Wonderful. Wait for you to come back. Oh, that won't be long. Trust me. Chicky, we were... great to see you, too. Yeah. Oh, where's Chicky? I didn't see Chicky. You have to go to the next screen now. Oh, yeah, I did. I just, oh, there we go. Yeah, we have I love, whole I love Chicky. I keep getting checks. It. I keep getting checks from Chicky's uh, product she's got. <laughs> Speaking of yeah. which. We had a give from the uh, event, which is going to go in the newsletter and various other places. But that, that those checks can be everybody's, right, Chicky? Exactly. Chicky's Chicky. got a Chicky's got a product that's on the travel side. So if you want to book uh, hotels, um, you know, uh, venues, rental cars, everything, you just add it to your website, and anyone that books through it, and that's so we've been adding it to all of our registration pieces, and as people book. Uh, we've been able to pick up extra extra revenue, so it's been great. So, so I think what we'll do is get started. I want to make sure that we're respecting everybody's time. Um, and so, first, I want to welcome everybody to the Hero Club Digital Meeting today. Um, really excited to be able to recap uh, some of the key learnings and experiences from last week in South Dakota. Some of you were there with us, some of you weren't, and we want to make sure that we're delivering on our promise that we understand that things come up that are really challenging or you just can't work around them in order to be able to be at one specific event. But we want to make sure you're getting the most critical takeaways and we're able to share out and most importantly, <coughs> we're connecting you in with other Hero Club members and other opportunities and different things that come up as we're going along. So, um, and then of course, there's, there's never, uh, never too many opportunities to be able to connect in with Hero Club members. So, um, to get us started on this discussion, first, I just want to always recap whenever we're together. Um, Hero membership is about all of you. It's about uh, a group of leaders who truly believe in, you know, leading with our pledge, the integrity, transparency, giving back to our community, sharing in our success and really taking on um, greater, greater steps, greater challenges, and reaching those next levels because we know and we appreciate the impact we can have in our communities and how we deliver on the success that we have and, and that we build with uh, ourselves and others. So really excited to have us all together. In terms of our values, it's been really exciting, hi Stephen, to, um, to continue on this journey of really bringing together an incredibly diverse group across all industries and sectors, size of business, stage of business, let alone our own personal demographics. And that does mean that we have representation across all religion, race, uh, social uh, uh, perspectives, um, voting, et cetera. And the main thing is we will not avoid you know, challenging conversations, but be very respectful of the fact that each of us is going to have our own way of, um, of uh, you know, basically impacting great things in our communities and so on. So really excited to bring us all together. What I wanted to do with this conversation is really be able to share out and, and then have an open conversation. And what I thought I would do is start with Jeffrey. Now, I would say Jeffrey's our first hero. It was Rob Ryan that tapped Jeffrey on the shoulder to really take over the mantle of the Hero Club, helping great leaders like you um, get to their greater success faster and then creating a movement around what it means to be a great hero leader and give back to our communities our economy and our great democracy so they, he tapped Jeffrey on the shoulder to do that to call him his our first hero because of that and really we went to South Dakota because of him 
Um, and, and, and it represented so much for him. So I wanted to start this recap with Jeff sharing out with us why he introduced all of us to Crazy Horse. Even if you weren't able to be there, you've heard quite a bit about it. But I want you to hear a little bit more of the backstory first. Jeff, do you, you mind something in? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, first of all, thanks everybody for joining. What a great crowd to have on today. And of course, we had a great crowd in South Dakota, uh, well over 100 uh, folks that uh, we, we thought, man, if we could just get over 100, we'd be happy. And we, we more than did that. So that was awesome. You know, I, I've always wanted to do an event at Crazy Horse because I grew up in the western part of South Dakota. I knew how spiritual the place is in itself, just the, the, the venue. Um, and then um, I knew a lot about the history of Crazy Horse. I knew a lot about the history of Crazy Horse, the memorial. So Crazy Horse, the man, and Crazy Horse, the memorial, and then the family that was running it. And so many years ago, I put um, uh, uh, Korshak and Ruth in the Sales and Marketing Hall of Fame. I happened to be on the board for the Sales and Marketing Hall of Fame International and as a trustee, and I decided to put them on the board of director or, or in the Hall of Fame about 15 years ago, maybe even 20. Um, and I just knew how important that was. And so I wanted us to go up and, and really understand the story of Crazy Horse, the man, and then Crazy Horse, the memorial, and then the dedication behind it. And so I want to talk to you about some of the takeaways. So, and then the, the other takeaway that we had the second day was we also had the C, not the, not the CEO. I actually, as we planned for Crazy Horse, I said to the team, what other thing can we do? And we, we started looking at some other cool stories that we could have local people be our anchor. And so we looked at, uh, you know, the Black Hills Power. We looked at the former um, deep mine that was the home state gold mine, the largest producing gold mine in North America, and was, was played out about uh, 20 years, 15, 20 years ago. And they decided to do something with this mile-long deep mine. And um, we actually went after the particle accelerator that eventually became, was put into Switzerland. Um, I helped lead that team that actually went after to try to win that from the government and try to win the particle accelerator to put in the deep lab in the mountains of South Dakota underneath a mile down. We didn't win that. But now it's a research lab. So I thought, well, that'd be cool. We could bring the, you know, those folks. And then I said, well, what's the most other iconic thing in South Dakota? Sturgis Bike Rally. Now, we all know about the Sturgis Bike Rally. During one week in, uh, in South Dakota's summer, the population of South Dakota doubles from 700,000 to 1.5 million over a 10-day period. And so I said, well, I told the team, go get me the CEO. And they came back and said, we can't find a CEO. I said, what the hell do you mean you can't find a CEO? It's a billion dollars. They, they do over a billion dollars in a week in South Dakota. Sure, there's got to be a CEO. And they go, Jeff, there's no CEO. So I said, oh, that's bullshit. So I got online. I started looking. And guess what? They were right. There was no CEO. So I said, well, who are we going to get? And so I finally said, well, let's call the mayor. And so we called the mayor. And so we had the mayor come as well. Because I thought it would be great to also have someone talk about how is a billion dollar brand operate when there's no one in charge. And, and so it, it, was, it was truly an eye-opening conversation. It was a great conversation in which we learned a lot of different things. And I'm gonna, we're going to ask everyone here that was there to share some of their insights and so forth. And I want to point out that the mayor of Sturgis, South Dakota, population 7,000 people, by the way, um, is a used car salesman who is a part-time part -time mayor who gets paid $22,000 a year. And I, to me, that was like, when he said he was a used car salesman, because I didn't know, I didn't, it, that didn't have that in my briefing information, you could almost hear a pin drop because it was like, whoa. And, and what he has done and the way he has built the brand and, and repositioned it in as a volunteer is, is beyond something. So there's three ways that I, I, my learning from, um, from Sturgis was there's three ways that you can basically operate when you're trying to drive a brand uh, or trying to drive the leadership of any organization. You can be competitive in your model, in your, in your style. You could be cooperative or you could be collaborative. And what he shows is that he has moved them from a, co um, from a cooperative model to a collaborative model. 
And the collateral model is winning big time to the point where he's put together multi-million dollar deals uh, with Harley Davidson and now others. And he's starting to build off the main event and starting to build what they call the shoulders. And so they're stretching out that period of time they're known for into something that could last more than it, more than 10 days. So I thought that was a great learning. Jeff, wasn't now, it exceptional too that, that, that the foresight that he talked about in terms of the demographic shift for a biker rally versus extending out into uh, stages for music, <laughs> uh, great food, uh, you know, uh, yeah. festival, you know, and, and really prolonging the life of that event past when the specific demographic it was launched for would be the size that it is, you know. Yeah, you, you can, yeah, just imagine 700,000 people coming into the state of South Dakota. We don't have that many hotel rooms in the whole state, you know. Um, you know certainly in Vegas, I don't, they don't have that many, right? So, yeah, and you imagine it's a town of 7,000. So, in what it was really interesting is he says, we're not just about Sturgis, we're about the whole Black Hills, the region. So that was cool. And then he said the whole state, which he's actually right. And then if you quite frankly, look how close Sturgis is to Wyoming, we also take over a good portion of Wyoming because Devil's Tower is only about uh, 30 miles away. So it, it, that, those were unique. Um, now, let me circle back to just my, my couple of takeaways that I had with the Crazy Horse discussion. So first of all, we had the three women leaders, the three leaders of the company who happened to be women. And that's the first time I've ever had like a try leadership and they were all women up on a stage. So I thought that was unique and that each one uh, was collaborative in their own way of which they did it. They, they were still clear competition because you had two of them were sisters. And so, so some of that came through, but, but yet they all knew their role, their role. So here were um, my three big takeaways from that discussion. One is time, time being relative. Because when most people look at, at Crazy Horse, they go, my God, they've been working on it for seven years and that's all they got. And, and I, look at, I look at what they've done as a hundred, and I said it's a 140 year old startup. They're in year 70, okay? And yet, and here's what they've done. They built this head that's bigger than all of Mount Rushmore. The Mount Rushmore would go into the arm. It's so small compared to the, what the size of that, of scope of what that is. But, but from Korshak's own words from film, and then talking to the family is that we learn that time is relative. Time is only something that we put on ourselves. They're saying in a blip of the mountain's time, by the way, it's nothing. It's not even a drop in the bucket. So I thought that was interesting. And then with- And it's 140 years, right, Jeff? <laughs> yeah, it's 140 years. They'll be doing, working on this thing. Yeah. So, but, yeah. but as opposed to, bill, you know, what is it, a billion years, million, 100 million years? Because mm -hmm. the, the Black Hills is the oldest part of the Rockies. So mm -hmm. I thought that was interesting. And, you know, and actually one person even said, in 30 years from now, I will be dust, but the mountain will still be standing. And so I thought that was kind of a unique piece. Um, the second thing that, that really dro 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 drove home for me was values. Deep, deep values in the way in which they're running it and how they do it and how tied they are to both Crazy Horse's vision um, to the Indians that asked them to take on this task and asked their father to do that and then how they're delivering it. So it, it, it's in everything that they do. It's in everything that they touch. Now they modernize in it with the ways that they do the foundation model, their, their for-profit model, their nonprofit model, the board, the university model. They have different ways in which they lay that across. But what's real critical is like us in the Hero Club, uh, they have some real walkaway values. And it's very clear in every conversation that they had or in the way in which they talked about it. And the third, th the third thing is, is it's not all pretty, was the way I wrote this, this point. We got into uh, understanding about the carving, and, and I even said the word crack. So what do you do when you got cracks? Because I know at Mount Rushmore, they always fill in the cracks, and they go, they're not cracks, Jeff. They're seams. And they're already in the rock. They're already in the mountain. 
and and they they and they, and they said we just you know we just take care of them we work with them and what you don't see up close or you don't see from far away you could see up close but even then you have to really look for it is the is the pinning that they do inside the structure and the and the mountain they actually put in steel rods that are as long as 24 feet in order to hold certain pieces in place so that you know at one point the nose doesn't fall off right because you're dealing with the with the with the thing that's moving and 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 ever changing i mean this happens to be a a rock that's off of this off of off of crazy horse you know so that's always changing and it's different i mean there's there's a seam right through here in this one this is a cut mark from the thing there's actually you know this we all go this, get ours <laughs> yeah you absolutely yeah yeah no, everybody's holding thinking? theirs up yeah, everybody hey, holds up has got them yeah <laughs> so and there's mica and there's mm -hmm. garnets and so it, i just thought that was a, a unique perspective at that um of what they do and i think we should you know you open it up trish however you want to do it but we can all talk about it but um yeah i think it was cool. so well, it was well one of the coolest uh, things we've ever done it, i i couldn't agree more and you know i i often speak with people that you know i'm interviewing for hero club membership about the authenticity of what we do it's not about just going to the five-star hotel it's these real experiences that make you you know, connect and understand things and see things, and you know, from a completely different perspective. And and while um, you know, people are getting ready to uh, to share some of their experience. Um, you know, some of the things you said, Jeff, really you know, rang true for me. That whole thing of you know, um, values walk away values. The uh, Monique didn't say it, but I I think we're all familiar with that. Measure twice, cut once you know, the safety and, and making sure that you're doing things the right way because that actually saves time. And, and then the legacy, I think it might've been Kirill and Steven, you'd be able to correct me and maybe we'll uh, jump to you, but um, uh, I think it was Kirill who stood up and said, okay, so when we are all dust, when none of us are still here, uh, this mountain will be here. Your legacy will be here um, along with the pyramids and the Sphinx. <laughs> what is the weight you feel, the responsibility you feel in knowing that? And it's just, it, you know, how you think about and how we all think about our own legacies and what we're working to leave um, um, for next generations and so on. It was, it was incredibly powerful. Um, so yeah, Stephen, did you want to jump in? Yeah. Um, what I got out of the weekend or the, the couple of days we spent and also now just listening to what Jeffrey is saying, it makes me wonder what would happen because there's an, an easy analogy that we can make between is there a difference between the sculptor's vision of crazy horse and a ceo's vision of their business mm -hmm. right yeah. and does a business really ever have a conclusion to it and no it doesn't so we have created in our world these constraints and milestones that don't last eternity, they actually are measured by in quarters and in years and bonuses. And it's an absolute shame when I saw the purity of the custodial relationship that these people had to what they were doing and what we have done in the last 20 years as business people to our businesses and the communities we live within. It was, for me, a wake-up call, a well, really big wake-up call. Steve, I want to add to that because I thought one of the most mm -hmm. unique aspects of it is, for those of you who know Crazy Horse, if you look at, it's like this, and he's pointing, and he says, this is, there lie my people. That's what the whole significance. And the horse's head. And Korshak used to take Monique out on Sunday mornings, and they would drive up to the mountain and set for hours. I thought that was a unique insight as well. And you can imagine them just sitting there looking and looking and then walking and looking and then climbing and looking. And that's what they would do. And th so here's this vision in his, he his head. And, and, you know, he hadn't even carved anything yet um, or just a little bit of stuff. They blown up the dynamite back then because uh, um, 
the uh, she's the same age as I am. We went to same we went to uh, rival high schools together, and so I know know her age and I know what was going on at that time period. So when she's like ten years old, there was there was barely anything there, and 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 there's a big hole that they're carving here, and and he and he finally told her you have to be reasonable when you do that because if you carve that big hole the span will collapse because the weight will not be, it's such a massive, massive structure. We're talking about this right here being 40, 20 to 40 st stories tall, right? So when you think of that, you know, that's a massive space. And he said, there's no way that that would support itself. So they had to move the horse's head over and his mane over and a smaller hole. And I just thought that was kind of a unique, a unique piece. There you go. So when you see that, that change way to go we got interactive uh, uh interactive media going on here so you that area right there i don't know if you can move your mouse there yes right old, here. You know, but to the far left there with them on the model on the scale model mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're gonna they're gonna have to seize that hole up uh, quite a bit and it's gonna look more more like a triangle under his arm probably because they just can't build that space and so i thought that was that, that goes with what you're saying Stephen. I think also, um, just to give an idea of the scale of that, we were out all on here, um, but just this hole alone, there was more rock pulled out of that hole than, the, than Mount Rushmore. <laughs> uh, it's just, it is so enormous. The nose itself weighs 120 tons, um, which is another thing is, and I think ties into what Stephen raised and Jeffrey, what you were following up on is the initial plan was that the horse would be carved first. And so in terms of following the vision, obviously the horse will be carved, um, but uh, the, the plan was changed. The face was done first. And what a, critical, what a critical decision that was in terms of the overall experience and, and moving it forward across 140 years for people to be investing in this to be built. You know, for me, um, this kind of brought up the whole notion of engineering the ability to change because i mean i do a lot of different things and i don't necessarily want to be doing this thing for forever and so the whole equation is how do i build in the ability to respond to market changes and circumstantial changes and all those kinds of things as time goes on so that people aren't having to call me when i'm in pagaritsa <laughs> and figure stuff out. And what I came to realize, and this really kind of reinforced it, is the importance of building, building in a, a sense of collaboration, not only within the people within the organization, but also with key audiences, you know, and having key audiences, including, you know, producers and clients and so on and so forth, feeling free to be able to, you know, call us up as a company and say, hey, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? Can you do this? Can you do that? And then having my own team have the same ability to come into my office and say, Kent, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Because look, nobody is, is as smart as everybody. And I know I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. <laughs> so, you know, just having access to that and the freedom to collaborate, I think is the way that you engineer in the ability to change. Yeah, then you get into the whole mission alignment, which is pretty exciting. I, I know, Ronnie, you wanted to be able to share some thoughts, and I know you have to jump a little bit early, so do you want to jump in? Yeah, I. Um, so the day we went up to um, Crazy Horse, um, and, and I think it was after spending a couple days with the sisters and um, Dr. Lori and hearing the story and what they went through and, and you go up to that mountain and it is, that head, it is so big. It is just, it was so overwhelming that I came down and I got really emotional. And uh, I don't really like to cry in general and especially not in public. So I was like trying to keep it under control and wishing my family had been there to, to share it with me. And, and then we went into the room and the Native American group spoke and then they played their music and they sang and they danced. And then I was just a complete mess. And <laughs> I just had to leave the room because that's okay. It was just, it was really beautiful. It was really 
an emotional couple hours. So I, 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 yeah, I made a note to myself, never call anything a museum tour again, because I mean, I, I it, it, if you weren't awestruck by all of those experiences, I, I don't, I don't, there'd be like, you know, is there a pulse? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was uh, truly incredible. When I'm explaining the Hero Club to people, I find that kind of interesting too. You know, there are these exercises that are, um, we've all been part of them, that are designed to bring emotion out of people. And it's, it, it, uh, it's a tool, it's a tool. Um, and what I try to explain in the Hero Club is we have these authentic experience, experiences where, you know, we don't use those tools to bring out emotion. Literally, it's, it's the all-encompassing kind of experience <laughs> that, yeah. that, that makes it so incredibly authentic and, 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 and at times overwhelming, you know. Um, I, who, who else wants to jump in? I know Chicky wanted to jump in as well. Yeah, I mean, there are a couple of things, and, and Ronnie, thanks for sharing that, because uh, Jeffrey, well, they first of all, they did an incredible job, as they always do, of organizing all of these things, and there were a lot of people, and we couldn't all go up to the mountain at once, and there were also a number of people who had to leave early, and so uh, Jeffrey had asked me, uh, because I was supposed to be in the first group that went up uh, to the mountain, and I was really looking forward to that, right, uh, but I knew that the people who needed to leave early had to be able to experience it. So as it turned out, I went in and heard Dr. Lori's talk uh, about Crazy Horse first, then went up to the mountain and then came back uh, and, and we uh, watched the dancing. And, and it wasn't just that side of it, the creative side. It was really the storytelling from the heart about what the life of Native Americans was like before the reservation and what it's like now. And, uh, you know, I mean, a part of me just felt, and the only word I can think of is ashamed that we don't spend more time thinking about the plight of that group of people. Uh, and not just in South Dakota, but, you know, all over the country where, where they uh, have been relegated to, to reservations. And oh, you know, all, about, the, yeah, all over the world. Yes, mm -hmm. and hearing about the unemployment and the drug use and the uh, the spousal abuse and uh, the fact that back in in the back in the day, right when they were uh, living off the land, uh, there were no widows and there were no orphans, right? And and just the character of the man and uh, obviously the women as well, but but the character was so so important to them. And had I not seen the things in the order that I did, I don't think I would have had the same perspective or that that wouldn't have had the same impact that it did. But the lessons, and I, I did write a blog about this, which I posted, I'm not sure you've all seen it, but uh, the two things that the sisters and Lori uh, said was that you really have to look at business through the long lens. And, and it's not just perspective, but really being able to see yourself in, you know, kind of this, uh, oh, I don't even know the right word, but look, looking really with an eternity kind of focus, right? And that it isn't just the now and it isn't just next quarter or, you know, can I make it until we raise our next round of funding, which I, I came to South Dakota with that just incredible pressure that I'm under in my own business to you know, get some successes. And just yesterday, uh, and this is still confidential, we haven't announced it, but just yesterday we signed the American Cancer Society, which is enormous for us. And we had just, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we had just come in, you know, getting the Chicago Symphony and you know, just a couple of other key accounts for us, but they're not live yet, and we don't make money until those hotel rooms are booked. And and so it really helped me sit back. And the, the other thing is I'm working with a group of people who are helping us get ready to raise money. And every time I try to point to the things that we've learned, it's like they want to sweep them away. And the one thing, and I don't remember whether it was Monique uh, or her sister who said uh, about all of the learning and the power that's in the pile of rubble, right? Because there's learning in the rubble and, and we have to be able to embrace that and to show why, especially from an investor perspective, it actually reduces risk to have had that pile of rubble there. And I'm proud to be able to point to the things that we've learned over the last 18 to 24 months in my business. But uh, Jeffrey and, and Tricia and the team, Carl, uh, just thank you so much um, for, and you know, I'm, 
presuming it was a little bit of a risk bringing us all out there because there there aren't a whole lot of hotel rooms, although you know everybody was accommodated, uh, and and it wasn't necessarily easy to get to. I have been on more small planes and in more little buses than than I care to do anytime <laughs> soon. But thank you for taking that risk and and you know on whatever day you know somebody came up with that idea, and Jeff, I'm pretty sure it was you, um, you know, and, and everybody's like, are you kidding me? But it was a great move, and thank you so much. And if you do it again, those of you who weren't there, Bill Wallace, that's you. <clears throat> I need somebody <laughs> to walk me up the mountain next time. <laughs> Bill, I love it, Chicky. Thank you. Um, and and so we have one of these retreats. We're already working on next year's off road. Uh, every year we do one of these in the Hero Club, and um, it, the interesting thing is we keep doubling the size as we go along. We have. We have twice as many people on this call today as when we started uh, and we acquired the Hero Club. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty exciting that um, that you know everybody will take that journey with us. And and as I said, there's some things that hold us, you know, that we have to be uh, back in the office. Um, now, uh, who else have I promised? Simon, you, you wanted to jump in. Yeah, you know, um, interesting. I was in New York doing a couple of meetings yesterday, and and what Jeff you were just talking about and Unfortunately, I, did, I wasn't able to be there. Sort of reminded me of a, of a couple of things. I think one is, is that, you know, we're all often under so much pressure from what other people expect us to, to do in terms of timelines and how quickly you do things. And that, that adds this huge amount of pressure. And I've always believed, I think this is probably a great example of, you know, every business and every model and every approach uh, is gonna be different. And there's the right approach for each of these, um, for, for whatever it is we're actually doing. And we actually have to kind of somehow or other be sort of resist that temptation, all the external noise and go, there's a path for your business. Uh, and that may be different. And the second thing, I think it adds, you know, additional context to the, to the idea of something I was talking to someone about uh, yesterday, built to last. You know, when you actually look at what you're doing with the perspective of going, you know, it's built to last <laughs> clearly in crazy horse that that's a whole different dimension of built to last, but built to last makes you think about what you're going to do on a different time horizon and will make you make choices um, that are probably um, a, a, again, different from whatever others might actually pressure you to be able to do in a, in the business. So I, I appreciate the um, ideas, but you know, those are just sort of the cup two of the thoughts that really strike me from um, as, as takeaways for me personally. Love it. Um, Chris, are you still here? I know Chris wanted to be able to share out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I, um, I almost didn't go. Uh, that would have been a mistake. Um, <laughs> I don't believe in accidents. Um, and this was very clear with this one. So what did I get from this? Um, courage of conviction. Um, I'm building something that's taken two decades uh, from concept and is formatted around a nonprofit. So if you want to talk about getting hit between the eyes, um, it, it couldn't have been more appropriate for us. Um, courage of conviction. You're going to be tested, uh, let me tell you. And to the degree that you're challenging something, in my case, it's gambling. <laughs> concept of gambling against investing, um, be prepared. And if, you, if you're not real uh, about it, you're not going to make it. So courage of conviction and how they were able to start a nonprofit with just this idea, a couple hundred dollars, and 70 years later, they're only halfway through it. It's just mind-boggling. Um, very special spot, the Black Hills. I'm really sensitive to that kind of stuff. I would put it on par almost with like walking around in Jerusalem. Uh, it's, it's got that kind of, um, wow, this is not an ordinary place. Um, and, you know, I had the fortunate um, opportunity to speak with, um, with the, the main, I, I don't know if she's the main one. I don't know which one's the main one. I get in trouble saying that. <laughs> but a couple of private conversations and it's just totally clear what the why behind the what is for them and what's driving that on. And so that really connected with me. Really a wonderful experience and uh, something I'll never forget. So thank you. Well, and I might even say, Chris, if I can, I won't give it up uh, as to what, but 
you know, Chris had an opportunity that was presented to him that if had he not been there, it would never would have, have, have occurred. So, and it came out of nowhere. And it, it just goes to prove that the more opportunity that you put for yourself to expose yourself to different things, um, you know, I always say there's like, sometimes I, you know, my team will say, Jeff, why are you taking that call? Or why are you doing that meeting? I said, there's a pony in there somewhere. And for oh, Chris, oh. Chris, Chris got a pony. <laughs> it's size of a freaking Clydesdale. Well, it's okay. Amazing. Right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would say it's a make or break. Yeah. That's but, but had you not been there, it wouldn't have never, it never okay. would have manifested itself. That's right. And so, you, you know, it's like that old, I tell the story in the, in the, in the last book, think big, act bigger about the guy that buys the lottery, you know, he keep the lottery ticket. He keeps praying, you know, dear God, let me win the lottery. Dear God, let me win the lottery. Each week it goes by. He doesn't win. He keeps praying to God. Why, 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 why have you forsaken me? And after about six times, God finally speaks to him and said, well, Bubba, you got to buy a ticket. <laughs> so, you know, the key story is you got to show up first before you can win. So cool. In the, in the hero club, I think it really speaks to the connectivity and, and certainly it's super intense at the, any events that we do. Um, I don't, I don't even use the word networking in any of the programming. You'll always see connection time. Um, because with hero club, the, the, um, armor is down and we're having those real conversations. Um, and being able to share, and Chris, I think, you know, you can attest to this. You, you're a member that's probably been to more events than anybody across the whole North America with us. But, um, you know, that, that arm and coming down and being able to say as easily, I'm really great at this and I have some suggestions for you, some feedback, some ideas. And the other side of it, I am really not doing well with this. I'm struggling. I'm challenged. I don't know what the next step would be, what feedback, what ideas, what, you know, suggestions do you have for me? Yeah, absolutely. Show up. You got to show up. Yeah. Um, who else wants to jump in? I know, Lou, we haven't heard from you. You're characteristically quiet over there. And Brian, you want to jump in? You're on mute right now. Hey, Trish, I'll just say really quickly. Um, oh, yeah. Another thing, um, I was talking to Monique up on the mountain and to kind of reiterate, she is completely fine with how long this is taking and how long it will take. And there's no angst there. Well, she just doesn't seem like a person with any angst. I don't know. Maybe she just comes across that way. But she's, for her, it's a work of art. It's going to take time. And also, she was very adamant about telling me that she had to keep her employees safe. And she can only have nine people up on that mountain at any one time, or then it's not safe. But she was really, it was very important to her to, to make me understand that she needed to keep her people safe. But she's completely fine with the, how long it's all going to take. It wasn't, yeah. uh, got to get this done, got to hurry, got to hurry. There's none I of love I love Ronnie that she was, she was, um, that, that sort of, you know, measure twice, cut once. And then, and then the seriousness with which, you know, you, you perp, you purposely set out the task at hand and, and you make it manageable pieces. Mm -hmm. And then she said, um, but you also have to have some mischief in there or none of it's worthwhile. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. And, and we've been talking about Yadviga Monique as the two daughters of, um, um, Jokowski that that took on this carving um, they are both hero club members as is Lori uh, the third uh, female leader that Jeff referred to in the beginning so all three of them are hero club members I know they benefited greatly and there's been a, a great deal of feedback um, because they've got a, a monumental task not just in what they're doing here but getting the message out and and they have not taken any government funding so they literally uh, take a step forward as they have the funding and the capability to do so. Um, Lou, I see you're off mute now. Were you going to jump in and, and Brian, right. and maybe no. you could share a little bit on some of the insights from uh, the panels as well. We had um, the leadership, the values, you know, leading through uh, our values uh, discussion after we did the, um, uh, the interview with the three leaders of the Crazy Horse Foundation. And then and then uh, we had the mayor um, and, the, and, and then the marketing uh, panel as well. So if, if you want to kind of speak to that a little bit too, that'd be awesome. What, what I got out of it mostly was on the, uh, 
for the crazy horse in the area, there's, they do have some adversity where unfairly, you know, they're uh, said that they're being, take, you know, they're taking advantage, they're exploiting the native people when they're, when they're actually doing the opposite. You know, so it's not like they don't have adversity. And I lived in the Rapid City area, you know, back in the 80s. And there was a lot of that talk around by people and obviously nobody ever went up there. They've, they've got adversity that they you know, unfairly do. You think they'd have more promotion than even nationwide. That a little bit of promotion would go a long way. It seems like there's a lot there to promote. Mm -hmm. it's, and it's a big step for them. Uh, <clears throat> they were referring to a New York Times article. Um, you know, so there, there, there's a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of challenges they have to address from- That uh, yeah, was uh, the New Yorker. And, and it was so unfair. Uh, and that, that article apparently came out on Monday while we were there. It was, yeah. We uh -huh. were behind the scenes, some of us were helping them try to deal with it. Um, just so everybody's aware, there was an article that was unfairly uh, criticizing them, saying it's nothing but a tourist trap and a, and a you know, not, they, you know, they don't give a crap about this. They only care about themselves, that kind of thing. And it's interesting for us to say what we're saying and then have somebody mm -hmm. else to say that and then to write about it. Cause clearly it was like, what, is, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> we just, you know, we just spent a couple of days with these guys. And of course, some of us know them for a lifetime and you're saying that, what the hell have you ever come up here? Have you ever driven by this place? Have you ever pulled them in the parking lot? You know? And so it was a unique piece. So they had to deal with it in a very respectful way, but at the same time punch them in the throat. So um, as much as they could. Nice well, but way. again, if we can get uh, folks to be more aware, and it was one of the reasons why I wanted to donate to them our, our tool to help them get more visitors. They do have 1.2 million visitors, but they don't have the website traffic that they should be having of people just checking them out. And yep. you know, perhaps the New Yorker article actually will get them some attention. I mean, sometimes negative press does that. Uh, but I, I think as a group, uh, particularly those of us who were there have now feel a responsibility of how can we help them and how can we use their donor base really to help support them all year long. Um, you know, so I'm looking forward to being part of a, a team that will help to do that. I think we should throw our rocks at them. <laughs> <laughs> we have a nonviolent approach to our impact in here. No, but, but did you notice that the New Yorker does not have a way to put uh, a reaction to the article? I was going to go in and, and write a counter, uh, you know, I'm a respectful counter statement about it, uh, but they don't allow you to put in uh, comments. I will tell you that they're, they, they uh, talked to the editor of the New Yorker and they will be, um, they've submitted an article and they're considering it for publishing. Oh, good. Yeah. Seems uh, like Lou. It's ironic. It seems like it's more of a cause that they would want to support, you know, for for Native Americans, for the downtrodden long-term project. It seems like exactly. ironic because it seems like they would be some very supportive of that type of endeavor. The the gentleman, the, the Native American uh, gentleman that um, uh, Chicky was referring to earlier and sharing the experience, the, the Native dancing and um, prior culture versus reservation um, uh, scenario today and so on. Um, speaking of great leadership, what, what a phenomenal man. I think he's a two-time Grammy winner um, and, and out there communicating and leading in his community um, in terms of all the positive and all the strengths and all of the opportunity for future appreciation, growth, and, and, um, and, and opportunities, obviously, for the community and the community surrounding the Native American culture. So, um, and, and um, by the way, matriarchal society, which was kind of interesting to hear about as well. Um, there was a question in our session about you know, why didn't you mention the women? And uh, then the response was, well, the women, the women are the ones leading it. <laughs> they're, they're leading the, the uh, community. So uh, it, was, it was just a really interesting reframe um, in terms of understanding uh, the culture and the approach and the focus on their young 
uh, men in the community as well. Um, Lou, I think you were off mute to, to jump in. Sure. So um, really just echo everything everybody said, looking through the long lens. One thing that did stick out was <clears throat> we had some uh, – uh, we had the honor of being able to spend a lot of time with Monique. Um, and she probably mentioned the story to everybody else, but about her, you know, it took a different view to decide uh, where to focus their efforts on, right? They knew there were going to be challenges, but her father wanted to do the horse and the arm. And her mother said, well, no, to, after her father died, her mother said, you know, what, we're going to focus on the face. Uh, of Crazy Horse, and that seemed to generate a lot more interest in the project uh, from the public. So it was just a uh, different, you know, looking at different perspectives when you're trying to, when everybody's trying to reach the same goal, um, you know, and being open enough to hearing other options or other opportunities that that can, you know, get everybody to the end line, uh, the uh, finish line, um, was pretty cool because then when they. <clears throat> dedicated did the dedication ceremony to the face when they finished in 1999 it it generated all this extra buzz and and it seemed to kick off the project again into uh phase two so and really the other thing we took away from it was you know everybody has adversity of of one kind or another um and to just keep pushing through you know whatever your targets are um, just keep pushing through and, you know, eventually you'll get there. It's just nothing happens overnight as I always like to say. So, mm -hmm. so um, Simon had asked, you know, about the panel takeaways and, and you've been hearing bits and pieces of the panel takeaways and the workshopping discussions that we all had individually. Uh, a couple of other things I wanted to uh, mention along those lines was, and it ties in perfectly with what you just said, Lou, is when we look at, um, hero factor. And for, for all of us, uh, Jeffrey outlined in, uh, that in the hero factor book, the, the grid on page 12, um, you know, we're looking at operational excellence and then aligning our mission values and our people and getting to the hero factor. And the story that Lou shared was just such a perfect example to me of that. You know, the mission was clearly outlined and the values and so on. The operational excellence is in the practice and, and that, you know, measuring twice, cutting once, safety first, all of those types of things. Um, but uh, essentially, they were able to make a major change like that, you know, carve the face, not the horse first, um, because it was in line with the mission of values and the operational excellence. And if that hadn't been so clearly laid out, and so firmly committed to, they wouldn't have been able to make those changes and still stay aligned as they have for 70 years. Uh, with the projection to do that for another 70 years. Um, so uh, I think, you know, that whole alignment on the mission values um, and our people and, and that operational excellence, that was uh, a huge part of the takeaways of the individual discussion. And in the marketing panels, uh, you know, really focusing in on who our key targets are, what our messaging is that's, you know, most powerful uh, for those key targets, and then, and then literally how we work through together in terms of delivering on our brand promise, uh, which is what mar marketing operational excellence is. Does, does anyone else want to add into that? Encapsulated. Okay. Just, just to add to that, somebody had said, uh, mm. when we heard that story about the mother making the change, they said, well, um, the gentleman said, well, you know, I grew up knowing that I'm always right, but my wife is always righter. So I thought that was a, yeah. <laughs> hey guys, I have to, I, I hate to interrupt, but Lori just brought this in. Look, uh, there, Lori, get in the camera here. There's oh, Lori, who just Hi, Lori. brought this, <laughs> this is a frame photograph of everybody that attended the event. Oh my goodness. That's fantastic. She, she ordered too big. So now I get it. Cause it's big. <laughs> Way to go. That's Isn't that amazing. cool? Oh, that we got to hang fantastic. that up. Take it in there. Take it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry. We get visitors all the time. <laughs> there we go. So Lori's a Hero Club member who actually was going to be sharing out on this call, but clearly had something she had to do. <laughs> how, about, <laughs> do how about Trisha? Yeah. Do we want to take like Henry and Troy and some of the others that weren't there? If maybe they mm -hmm. had questions of what or Bill yeah. or anyone else, or Catherine and Peter. And Peter. Anybody? Yeah. No, I'll, I'll jump in. Uh, everything I've heard since you all have come back 
has been fabulous. And sorry to miss, my stuff was actually laid out on the bed. My ticket, my plane ticket was purchased. And at the last minute, we had some people come in from two different countries. We're in the middle of a large raise. And we had a very successful week, over 600 million. Wow. So, Congratulations, Bill. It Yay. was good. It, it was good. But I hated to miss it. But everything I've heard has been so positive. And, but not just positive, emotionally positive. Like chords were struck, hearts were touched. So the Hero Club is becoming something more than just the Hero Club. It's, it's getting to that gelling to that family, that group of people that not just like each other, that love on each other. And I'm just so excited and so impressed by Trish, what you've done, and Jeff, what you've inspired. So I just want to say thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much, Bill. Yeah. Madeline, that's making me when think, is this actually because I think be this finished? is the first one you missed. What's that? <laughs> when is this actually going to be finished? When it's done. <laughs> when it's done. I love it. What a perfect answer. Another 70 years, at least. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll throw my two bits in here. Um, I told Lincoln that I was jealous of him that he was going to this uh, before he arrived. And now I understand why. Mm. So looking forward to the next event. Awesome, Troy. Anybody else? Madeline, this is the first one you missed. I, 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 we missed you. <laughs> I hope so. Um, yeah. One of the things that I just value so greatly is I think I know I need to be reminded intentionally <clears throat> through, my, through my own practices and with a group of people about what I care about inside, you know, because there's the, the daily tactical, then there's the big picture. And just to have this recap is really fantastic. Uh, I, w I just came back from Las Vegas, I was wor I'm working on arrays as well and projects with other companies. <clears throat> and it was similar values, similar short term versus long term. But, you know, I was just sitting here thinking, wow, what, how fantastic in the middle of my day to be able to show up and soak in all this stuff I care about with a bunch of people who care about it as well. And it's really important, uh, at least to me. To, to remember, to sharpen the focus. And you're not alone. Mm -hmm. what, a, what a great segue, Madeline. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Jeff, I'm going to wrap, but I don't know if you had anything more that you wanted to say quickly. You're good. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I, following up on what Madeline said, we are so grateful for you and the mission that all of you are on and that we get to be a small part of that. And, and as Madeline said, that little bit of a reminder, you're not mm -hmm. alone. We're here with you. All of us are here together and putting that stake in the ground um, that Jeff lays out in the hero factor, that these things matter, that it matters to do great things with our success and, mm -hmm. and to bring our communities with us and, and have that legacy that we're leaving. And, and I think, you know, just, just to sum all of this up, uh, Crazy Horse just absolutely embodied that and certainly gave us time to pause and reflect and, and, um, and, and really take that in. Um, we are very much looking forward to next meetings we have coming up. So just really quickly, our next member meeting for Hero Club members will be us gathering the evening of the 8th and the 9th in New York City. Um, lots, of new, lots of new exciting stuff to share with you about what's happening in New York and a new partnership we have, um, the venue we're going to be in, which is just incredible. Uh, so more to come on that. The C-Suite day will be the 10th, so you'll need to schedule at least the 8th to the 10th. And then all the councils we're building, some of them will be hosting um, uh, meetings on the day following. So if you're involved in any other councils, certainly you'll want to touch in on that. Um, in terms of uh, smaller meetings we have coming up and leading up to that time, on October 10th, we're going to be in Orlando and doing an evening uh, pop-up, just a get-together uh, Hero City Summit. We're going to do one in uh, Phoenix on October 14th. Virginia Beach on October 22nd. That one's as of this morning. Uh, so October 22nd, you wouldn't have seen that in the calendars yet. Um, our promise with our city summit is we'll let you know as soon as we possibly can. And some of them are pop-ups, meaning uh, we're, we're going to be in town and we're going to host great people coming together while we're there. 
Um, a city summit luncheon is a little bit more formal uh, two hour uh, time together as well. As Hero Club members, you're invited to attend any of those and invite any qualified guests, of course. So that's just, that's just something we do as part of our outreach and, and value add for Hero Club membership. Um, on October 24th, we have a CEO CMO summit in uh, Atlanta. And, um, and uh, I've already talked about the December meetings. In terms of these digital meetings, we're really excited about how we're building these out and how meaningful they can be. You know, just the one hour time slot, as, as Madeline alluded to, and, and so many of us, um, just to take that little bit of time in, out, connect with each other and have really great discussions. The last one was on, is there gonna be a recession? When will it be? How do we as hero factor leaders, you know, prepare for that? Yeah, it was a great conversation. Uh, we got feedback from that and suggestions. If you have any suggestions on other great topics for us just to have great conversation about and, and share perspective and insights that we're all getting seeing in, you know, across all different industry sectors, markets, and so on, uh, please send a note to Kathy Jo. She's ca uh, capturing all of that for me and making sure that we have that incorporated. Um, anything else? I think, I think that pretty much Oh, Jeff, yep. Yeah, I just want to point out a new episode on C-Suite TV just hit live today. Uh, if you want to watch it, it's got uh, Deepak Chopra on it. Uh, Deepak uh, was in our studios here recently and filmed on his brand new book, MetaHuman. It's a great read. Um, so that's out today. So just lots going on with us in terms of new podcasts mm -hmm. and new things. So if you haven't uh, downloaded or gone to iTunes and just get on the list for a couple of, we have 157 shows now on C-Suite Radio. So uh, it just, we're adding like a show a week and sometimes as many as two or three a week, but uh, it's just going going extremely well. So I just thought mm -hmm. I'd throw in those two plugs real quick. Um, and Thank don't forget you. again, put down December 8th, 9th and 10th for New York City. And I don't know why you're not saying the location yet, but the location is down, <laughs> is right next to the Staten Island Ferry. It's gonna be way downtown and it's really cool location. So uh, it Evan's, right, it's just, Evan's just a couple blocks from you, brother. So it'd be easy for you to get to. And okay. Lindsay too. And Lindsay gets and Lindsay home. Lindsay gets to walk too. Lindsay, Evan lives right next door to you in this next building over. Just FYI. Oh nice. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Saying that it's right next to the Staten Island Ferry doesn't give it enough credit. It, yeah, uh, well, we'll be I, at the South Street Seaport in the financial district. It's an amazing location. I'm super excited to be down there. Yeah. We have to keep out doing the, the, the last one, right? So last year was in the World Trade Tower and it was incredible. This one, I'm, I am so excited. Thank you for sharing that, Jeff. We will um, have find available hotels nearby. <laughs> there we go, exactly. 110% <laughs> best rate guarantee. There you go. <laughs> I love it. Anybody who needs any information on that needs to let us know. We'll connect you with Chicky or it's in the um, membership directory. Um, the, the, if you have a story that you want to get out on those podcasts, as Jeff said, we have more than 150. We've got uh, radio uh, hosts now that are putting in specific C-Suite Network Hero Club con contributors. Uh, so when you do an interview with them, they're, they're marking that. So, you know, just, just let us know what you're needing. Kathy Jo is on. You can see her there. Um, she's doing those ongoing touch-ins, and we're, we've got all kinds of exciting new things coming out in terms of uh, different things we're working on that, that, um, that we can be um, working with you on. So, I just um, went with Alan <laughs> on, the, on the manufacturing crisis uh, that went on my uh, radio show. So. Phenomenal, Chicky. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't okay. put Hero Club on there, so I need to go back and put that. And, awesome. and by the way, let me just share this real quick. I'll share it real quick mm -hmm. if I can. If you just go to c-suiteradio.com and just click right here, request to be interviewed. That's mm -hmm. all you have to do. And that'll go right to the shows. And we have all the you know, many, many topics that we have in terms of the episodes. So there's lots there. So uh, there's just some great, great shows and good little Willie Jolly show, uh, WABC, just some good stuff. So uh, all you got to do is just click right there and uh, we'll request to be interviewed. So there you go. Fantastic. Super. Okay. So um, for any members that want to stay on for a few minutes just to say hello or, or chat, um, I'm going to be on for the next few minutes and, um, and otherwise uh, wishing you the, an amazing rest of the week. Thank you so much for the time today. Bye everyone. Thanks, everybody. Keep it up. Right. Cheers. Orlando. See you, Dave. Where, uh, where exactly in New York is it so I can...